Good morning, St. Matthews. A joy to share in worship with all of you today. Happy All Saints Day, a day where we remember the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, and that Jesus, um, by and by the grace of God, makes us all saints. And, and so uh, today we remember those who have gone before us, those who are among us, and those who have just newly joined us as well. Uh, again, just a joy to share in this time today. Today is very special. Not only will we be having our first baptism um, virtually over Zoom, we are going to try live stream from the sanctuary, but also um, we have a communion today as well as we as a community gather around the table and we feast upon God's goodness. So again, welcome to worship. May you experience God's love and peace. And remember that we begin this service as we begin every day of our lives. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God who loves us all. Amen. We begin with an opening litany, uh, a litany of the saints. Amanda, thank you so much for leading us. Litany of the saints, inspired by Fran Pratt. God, we remember those saints who have gone before us. We lament their passing and honor their legacy. We give thanks for all we have learned from them. God, we remember the saints who are now with us, learning, growing, questioning, and serving. Draw us together as your body of living follower, sinners and saints, broken and beloved by you. God, we remember the little saints who have just been born this year each one of these little ones are a sign of your love and hope, reminding us of your never ending creative and redemptive work. For all the saints who followed the way of Christ faithfully, we follow their example. Those who made mistakes along the way, we learn from their experience. Those who made progress for peace, we continue their work. Those who live simply and quietly, we are enlightened by them. Those who gained honor and distinction without pride, we are humbled by them. Those who were martyred for their faith, we commend them to your care. May the peace of Christ continue to inspire us to good works, humility, simplicity, and peacemaking. As those four mothers and four fathers were inspired by Jesus to live in grace and love. Let's pray. Almighty God, you have joined your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to live as your saints, grounded in faith and commitment, and to know the overwhelming joys through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
good morning, everyone. This week is very special. Do you know why? Today we are celebrating All Saints Sunday. Maybe you've heard of people like St. Francis or St. Peter or St. Michael, but did you know that we are all saints? Today we are remembering extra special saints in our lives, like our loved, one, loved ones who have passed away and have gone to be with God in heaven. And we're celebrating new saints in our church that have been born this year. And guess what? We're going to have our first baptism on Zoom. What a perfect day to have a baptism. Today, we get to baptize baby Evelyn into our holy family. I just love watching baptisms. Do you know why? It's because each time I watch one, I am reminded that I am a loved child of God and that God claimed me before I was even born, just like God did for each of you and like God did for Evelyn. So I have some things here with me that we are going to be giving to Evelyn after her baptism, and I wanted to share them with you. So we are going to give Evelyn this candle so that each year on the day of her baptism, she can light it and remember that God's light shines in her. And let's see what else I have in here. We're going to give her these cute bath toys because well, baptism's all about water, we celebrate in baptism that water cleanses and purifies and heals and nourishes us. And we hope these bath toys will provide lots of splashing fun in the tub for Evelyn and also serve as a reminder of the waters of her baptism that claim us to be children of God forever. And we're going to give her this mirror. Can you guess why? Because we hope the mirror will remind Evelyn and her mom and dad every time they look at their beautiful and unique faces that each human face bears the image of God and that God loves them just the way they are. And we're going to give Evelyn this book, um, this cute book, because it is never too early to start hearing about God's love. And we hope this book will help Evelyn and her family start talking about God and the, the work that God does in their lives. And finally, we have a gift for, for Evelyn's parents. They're going to get this book too, because you're never too old to learn and grow in your faith. And today they are promising to also help Evelyn learn and grow in her faith just like your parents did for you. So before we witness baby Evelyn's baptism, I just want to say to all of you children of God, I hope that every time you see a candle, maybe it's a birthday candle or a fall pumpkin spice candle, that you remember God shining in and through you. And when you see a reflection in a window or a puddle, that you see God in you and know that you were made in God's image. And when you splash in that puddle or do the dishes or get caught in the rainstorm, that you remember splashing in the waters of the baptismal font and that you are a claimed child of God. And all God's children said, amen. Bless you, St. Matthews. Um, what a joy for us to share in the baptism of Evelyn Ray Torgensen, proud parent of Megan and Carter. Today we celebrate that it is God who claims us, who loves us, who brings us to the font of baptism. And in this, through his death and resurrection, reminds us that there is life beyond this life today. We're, we, we are united with all the baptized into one body of Christ anointed by the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the whole world. 
Carter and Megan, by the Holy Spirit's trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Evelyn baptized? If so, answer, we do. We do. As you bring Evelyn to the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with these responsibilities. To live with her among God's faithful people, bring her to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, to nurture Evelyn in the faith, so that Evelyn may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others of the world God made, and to work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Evelyn grow in the Christian life and faith? If so, answer, we do. We do. Sponsors Nick Swanson, who is on Zoom today, and also Sarah Jones, do you promise to nurture Evelyn in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit? and to help her live in the covenant of baptism, to walk with her, remind her that she is a beloved child of God. If so, answer, we do. Nick, you're welcome to give a hand and a thumbs up or unmute yourself and say, I do. Um, and Sarah is going to do the same. I do. We do. <laughs> beloved of God and community of faith, do you promise? to love and support and care for Evelyn, to introduce yourself to her when we finally can be together in worship. Do you promise to pray for her parents, Megan and Carter, as they serve and they love her, but also will you support her as a new member of the body of Christ? If so, answer, we invite you to put a, a thumbs up or in the chat say, I will, and I ask God to help and guide me, or just say, I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. And as you were typing, I will, I will invite you to um, profess your faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. This creed is centuries old and unites Christians in the belief in the triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so we join together in professing our faith, rejecting sin, and confessing the faith of the church. We join together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe, in, I believe Jesus in Jesus Christ, Christ God's only Son, our Lord, Son, our Lord was conceived, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin born Mary, of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the of saints forgiveness of sins, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of, resurrection of the body, and life and everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now we pour the water and we hear these words. Holy God, holy and merciful, you are the giver of life, you are the everlasting wellspring, you are the fire of rebirth. At this font, holy God, we pray. Pray to you for the water of baptism and for your word that saves us in this water. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into your whole creation. Illumine our days and lives and our bones, dry our tears. Wash away the sin within us and drown out the evil around us. Satisfy all our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, sweet Evelyn, you're just squirming ready, aren't you? Here we go. Evelyn Ray, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Megan and Carter are going to lay hands on her as we offer this prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Evelyn with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence now and forever. Amen. And now, Carter, if you can give her the sign of the cross, you can dip your hand even in the water. Do 
Sweet Evelyn, child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. November 1st is now Evelyn's baptismal birthday, and so family and friends and faith community, you are to throw a party for her every year. Remind her that she is a beloved child of God. Continue to have her dip her fingers into the water of life and remember this beautiful identity that she shares with all of us. And you can light this candle every year and hear these words. Sweet Evelyn, may your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. And beloved community, please join me with joy and celebration as we welcome Evelyn Ray in as a newly baptized within our community. We join together. Evelyn Ray, we welcome you yeah, welcome into the body, into the body of Christ, Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in the praise of God, 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 gospel reading for today comes from Matthew, the fifth chapter. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then Jesus began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteous sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Beloved community, grace and mercy and peace to you. A joy to celebrate in this time of celebrating all saints. A few years ago, David and I, we asked our neighbor to help us move a large piece of furniture that we could not move on our own. Um, so our very kind neighbor immediately came over and they actually practically moved the large TV and the desk on their own. And so we were really grateful. And as our neighbor, his name was Waylon, was starting to leave, like I gently, now it, all, now it even so, feels so weird, but I gently like tapped him on the shoulder. And I just said, thank you. Um, this is so kind, bless you. And usually someone would say that customary, well, you're welcome, no problem. But my neighbor, my saintly neighbor, said, don't 
bless me. I've never done anything good, anything worth, worthy of a blessing. And then he actually diverted his eyes and looked at the floor as if he was ashamed. I don't recall what I said, but I remember feeling really shocked. I had never had someone refuse a blessing or communicated so quickly and clearly that they did not feel adequate enough to receive a simple blessing. It makes me think, what messages did my neighbor hear throughout his life that would bring him to this conclusion? Did he learn a, the lie of perfectionism that he would not measure up if he did not have a perfect job and a tidy household and a loving family? Did he grow up in a family or a church system that was highly conditional? A system that communicated in very direct or indirect ways, you will be loved and accepted if you abide by these rules and norms. Did my neighbor carry regrets that were too heavy for him to carry or maybe too weighty for him even to forgive? What harm or trauma had my neighbor endured that he would feel he was unworthy, less than, Many of us are socialized to believe that we're blessed when our life is comfortable and all of our material and spiritual and emotional needs are met. We're blessed when we can sit back and marvel at our good fortune. And I have to tell you, <laughs> one of the most annoying hashtags for me is like the hashtag blessed. Now, if um, if you're not on social media, it's okay if you don't know what I'm talking about, but some of you do. Um, all it is is a little hashtag with the word blessed and someone will post a picture um, uh, of themselves in front of a brand new house or a new car or their family all in cute clothes that all match for a holiday picture or even just a cute quaint cafe where they are sitting with a cup of coffee and a book to read all day. And none of these are wrong, but I think throwing around the word blessed as if it's a direct decorative throw pillow, it hallows out the depth of what really a blessing is and what it really means to be blessed. In our gospel text today, Jesus looks out at the crowd of people and he starts teaching them, kind of like throwing out blessings to everyone that will hear. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who are meek. Blessed are those who hunger or thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Now, these moral, these beatitudes are not moral to-do lists, but they're rather an honest account of life. I often imagine as Jesus is looking out and, and he's tenderly gazing at each person, almost like knowing their pain. And he wants to offer a word of hope and good news that's tailored for each aching heart. These blessings, blessed are those, blessed are you. They're given as a gift with no strings attached, grace unleashed, to help everyone gathered catch, catch a glimpse of God's kinship and care. Because when we're afraid or lonely or depressed or grieving, it's hard to remember that God has not abandoned us. Jesus knows this and he offers a blessing that serves as a window into God's very heart. Jesus says, blessed are those who are poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Being poor in spirit, it's not like a momentary feeling of being down, but instead wading into despair. You can also interpret this beatitude to read, blessed are those who have given up all hope in the world. 
those who are suffocated by unjust systems, victims of oppression and innocent suffering, those who are exhausted trying to fight for justice and they've just lost hope and have put their hands up. Jesus says, I see you and the kingdom of God is yours. Notice Jesus doesn't say, just have a little bit more faith, try a little harder. Instead, doubt and despair are held with grace. Jesus offers this assurance that even if you have lost all hope, hope in God, God has not abandoned you, but is surrounding you with divine presence and promise. Jesus goes on, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. This All Saints Day, in the midst of a pandemic, where yesterday 100,000 people were diagnosed with the coronavirus, we can all write a really long list of all the things we mourn. For some within our community, it's the loss of a spouse, a child, a loved one, and our hearts ache. And we've not been not able to like gather in the ways that we usually do to solve some or soothe some of our grief. For others, mourning, it looks like the loss of a job, a future, a relationship. If the poor in spirit have lost their hope, those who mourn have lost their joy. Jesus offers this promise. You will be comforted, held, and known. God will act on your behalf to bring consolation and compassion. I know this may sound weird to all of you, but I love officiating at funerals. Sometimes I prefer them over weddings. At funerals, we get to speak honestly about our heartache and our pain, but we also get to lean into the hope of the resurrection. There's something so sacred about celebrating the life of a loved one, sharing their stories in the context of worship, reminding everyone gathered that their loved one was simultaneously a saint and a sinner, blessed by God because they are a child of God. And really their loved one has not passed on, but instead has drawn near ever so to the love and the presence of God. Even though they're beyond our immediate grasp, they're still connected to us by love and memory and the communion of saints. At the end of every funeral, we offer words of commendation. Whether I'm at a graveside or if I am in a sanctuary, I place my hands on the casket or the urn. And this is a collective saying of, of handing over our loved one to God, to God's mercy. And these are the words, some of the words that are shared. We commend your servant, and then I share the loved one's name, to your almighty care. Acknowledge, we ask you, a sheep of your own, uh, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming, a ray of your own light. Receive them into the arms of mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all the saints in light. It's so hard to say goodbye. It can be a devastating journey of grief, but Jesus not only promises to be with us, but to offer comfort and hope. For all who mourn today, we are with you too. Jesus goes on to say, for those who are feeling crushed, as if they are like living doormats at the threshold of life. Jesus says, blessed are those who are meek, for they will inherit the earth. The word meek can be translated humble or gentle in a positive sense, but in the context, it's, it's best actually humiliated. It's like a great reversal. Jesus upends the values of power and privilege that is often preferenced by a few. And, and he says that God blesses and offers an inheritance to those who have been systematically left out or who are marginalized by our society. Who are the meek today? 
It's those who don't have protections and rights or those rights are in jeopardy. Who are being terrorized these days because of the color of their skin, their ideology, their religion, the language that they speak. It is these whom Jesus notices and offers blessing and, pro and provision. And then Jesus looks out into the crowd and he notices all who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Like those who've been praying every day, every day for God to make things right and whole and peace filled again. I have found myself waking up at 2 a.m. Oh, way too many nights. I've got insomnia, folks. But I pray. I'm praying that God would make all those things that feel misaligned in our world right and just again. These saints that Jesus was talking to in the first century Palestine, they had the same fervor and passion as those of us who are trying to make it through these turbulent times. And we're praying that God, God would make things restored and there would be renewal. There is a promise for all of us who stay up late and keep praying. Do you notice the first four Beatitudes, they speak of God's agency to come alongside those whose lives are lacking. And I think if, if Jesus looked at us, like if Jesus were here and on the Zoom call and he was scanning all of our faces, he would add a few more Beatitudes. He'd say, blessed are those who are anxious and worried. You're not alone. Blessed are those who have insomnia. God will give you rest. Blessed are those who are overwhelmed by life. God will give you peace. Blessed are those who are worried about the election. God will meet you on the other side. Blessed are those who are victims of violence. God weeps with you. God rages with you. And God is mobilizing for change. Blessed are those who are, L are LGBTQIA plus siblings. You are loved and affirmed, made in God's image. Blessed are those who are clothed in glorious black skin. Your life is sacred. There's so many more that we could write. There are, more, there are four more Beatitudes in the Gospel of Matthew. The first four bring comfort for those who are suffering. The next four are offering encouragement for those who remain faithful in the midst of conflict and hardship and unrest. The next four Beatitudes, they recognize that the beloved saints, they participate in embodying God's good news. So Jesus goes on, blessed are those who are merciful for they will receive mercy. Blessed are those who, who show mercy and forgiveness in tangible ways. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Those who are honest and they live without pretense. This blessing recognizes those who are willing to lead with vulnerability and truth and not put on a, a fake face to just make it seem as if they've got it all put together. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God those who are agents of peace and they take steps to alleviate violence and cruelty and conflict. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Do you notice at every point, as people are feeling overwhelmed by life or they're engaging and trying to bring about life for the common good, there is blessing upon blessing. And it's not based on what you do, but instead, who you are as God sees you, as Jesus sees you, recognizes you, and offers not only encouragement, but comfort. And this promise that you are not alone. All of this is couched in grace. I love Nadia Boltz Weber in her book, Pastrix, The Cranky, Beautiful Face of a Sinner and Saint. She writes this, God's Grace is a gift that is freely given to us. We don't earn a thing when it comes to God's love. And we only try to live in response to that gift. No one is climbing up a spiritual ladder. 
We don't continually improve until we are spiritual and we no longer need God. We die and are made new. But that's different from, different from spiritual self-improvement. We are simultaneously saints and sinner, 100% of both, all the time. The Bible is not God. The Bible is simply the cradle that holds Christ. Anything in the Bible that does not hold up to the gospel of Jesus simply does not have the same authority. The movement in our relationship to God is always from God to us. We can't, through our own piety or goodness, move closer to God, end quote. It is only God who comes to us and who offers the blessing. I've thought so much about Waylon over the years, and I lived across the street from him for six years. And I wish that I would have gotten the courage to march across the street and remind him that he was a beautiful, beloved child of God, not because of what he had done or not done, because he was made in the image of God, a beautiful man worthy of love and care, just like each one of you and me. Let us pray. Holy, most gracious God, give us courage these days. Help us to continue to learn from the saints who have gone before us and who are among us, who show us faithfulness even in the midst of mourning, even in the midst of trial, even when they feel meek, even when they thirst for righteousness. Continue to turn our hearts and form us by your spirit to be peacemakers, to be pure of heart, receiving your gift of grace at every turn. Thank you for the gift of this day, for making each one of us your children, blessed, not because of what we do, but because of who you are and how you love us. Amen. Holy and mighty and merciful Lord, our divine ancestor, calling all ancestors together. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you walk alongside us and nourish us in Jesus, your son, who in the power of the spirit has embraced our suffering and isolation, who preached good news to the poor and who in the newness of risen life offers a hope-filled future for all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. <clears throat> Remembering therefore his death, resurrection and ascension, we anticipate our coming glory with Christ and the spirit and all saints. We invite you to unmute as together we pray the prayer that our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer, in whatever language uh, you're familiar with, let us pray. Our, our Father, Father, in Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your, kingdom come, your, your will be done, will be done. Will be done. Will be done. give us today our daily bread, give us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, give us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil, and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever, amen, amen, power and the glory now forever and ever, amen. So we invite you to share uh, in Holy Communion. Uh, again, if you're by yourself, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, 
and turn to your partner uh, if you have those and uh, and share communion together. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now let us pray. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs whose sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists, conservationists, and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Lord of every nation, guide this country red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. God in your love, hear our prayer. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Lord of every time, countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died. Today, we remember Sharon Hanratty and hold Diane and Macy in our prayers. We also remember Lola May's brother-in-law, Jim, sister-in-law and best friend, Edith, and two very good friends, Dee and Francine. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Holy God, receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until the day when you gather all creation around your throne where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. And so I invite you all to unmute yourselves, turn on your videos and let us share in God's peace. God's peace. God's peace, everyone. <laughs> God's peace, peace with you. God's peace. peace. God's peace, everyone. Peace. 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 And now we invite Francis to share in the blessing. Oh, God. You call your servants to venture of which we cannot see the ending by a path yet untrodden through risk unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 We go as a community to love and serve all people. Thanks be to God. A joy to share in worship with all of you, to have our first baptism um, in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, what a joy, a special, special day.